Hey Rat Bags, it's Jay. Welcome to a Survival Show Revival. Maybe just one off today. I want to talk about some games that got release dates. Over the weekend we've got some news as well and I just want to give you a heads up about what to expect to see in the next few weeks and stuff. I am going to be playing Small Land. You won't see it much on this channel, maybe like one little video that I'm doing with Raz, but otherwise if you want to see gameplay and guides you've got to check out my JPG Crafted channel. I'm also going to be streaming it on my new channel JPG 100 Days. You'll find the links to both of them in the comment section down below. It's looking good. It's coming out on 29th. It's a mini survival game where you are small. You've got to explore the, I guess, world that is now devoid of humans for hundreds of years and try and reclaim the land. It's got taming in it. It's got base building. It's got some really cool features with servers in how you play with your friends and able to take your bases with you. So it's a really, really standout feature for me. But that's not the only thing I'm talking about. I'm going to be talking about the Axis Unseen, a release date of next year, and a couple other games. Fountain Survival Youth. No, hang on. It's the Fountain of Youth Survival. I think it's that's the name of it. That's a pretty cool game. I remember giving it a try a demo a little while ago. Well, that's coming out really soon on Steam. And we've also got Above Snakes, another little cool survival game that's coming out as well. So we're going to talk about all that, plus Dark and Darker. Looks like trouble. The Battle Royale Tarkov style, but with magic. Looks like it might not end up coming to actual full release as they've been sent a cease and desist order by a rival company. So we'll get into the details of that. So yeah, as a little one off this weekend, it's the survival show, let's go. So the Axis Unseen is a huge open world semi-survival simulation game where you'll be hunting strange creatures and pretty much being a archer class that you might imagine from something like Skyrim. I mentioned Skyrim because the lead solo developer of this game also helped create and develop a lot of that game as well. So expect a massive world, five times bigger than Skyrim with a big focus on the stealth skills you'll need to take down multiple different creatures and huge enemies. You will have some other weapons to use as well like you'll need your blade to maybe do a bit more stealthy but it's definitely geared towards that kind of gameplay if you like hunting games if you like that real simulation look out for this one enemies will not just be able to sense or see you they'll be able to smell you too if the wind is blowing in the wrong direction as I keep saying, it's a massive game set to the heavy soundtrack of metal music as you try and get lots of new equipment and new magical arrows and abilities to take on these monsters. It's absolutely bonkers that it's been made by just one developer, but they're pretty much doing absolutely everything. So it's scheduled for release in 2024. Not a definitive release date, but yes, it's good to see at least we might see this at some point next year. So the Axis Unseen Steam page link will be in the comment section. So as I said, it's not all doom and gloom. If you're looking for something new, this game of Web Snakes is coming out on the 25th of May. It's already got a prologue. You can go and check it out. I've backed this on Kickstarter. been following its progress for a while now. It's that top-down kind of viewpoint, but it's got procedure-generated tiles, so no playthrough is ever really the same. You will be fighting off zombies in a Wild West setting as you may be prospect, complete quests, find new loot and gather resources to build out your homestead. Expect lots of cooking, lots of combat and in this trailer they show off a bunch more to do with the NPCs you'll be trading and talking with as well as a pretty cool boss fight. If you enjoyed Lens Island last year, I think you might really enjoy this one. It does look to have a little bit more replayability with that procedural generatingness. Yeah, that wasn't a proper sentence but I'm still going with it. Another one that you can follow on Steam and like I said it's coming out on May the 25th. I'm definitely going to be giving this a shot and I can't wait to show you some more. I might even boot up the prologue again as we did stream it a little while ago. So Survival Fountain of Youth is a single player survival game, very much in the same sort of vein as something like Green Hell or Stranded Deep. It's the 16th century and you have been washed ashore after a storm on a deserted island filled with horrible creatures that will probably want to rip your face off. You'll have base building in this and you'll be able to craft yourself ships or boats to get across to the different islands. I really thought the demo for this was pretty cool. It definitely had some old school vibes to it, but it definitely had some really nice features too. So definitely simulation, survival, all the things you come to expect. And yeah, it's going to be coming out really, really soon on the 19th of April on Steam Early Access. Again, I'm pretty sure it's got a demo up or you might be able to play the prologue version of it now. But I can see this being a big hit just like Stranded Deep and Green Hill as well. You can probably dig around and find the videos I did when I took a look at this a while ago or stream, but otherwise expect to see me cover this, hopefully, before I go off to America for a week. Survival Fountain of Youth, 19th April. 
So Small Island, it actually got announced, I swear, in like 2017, 2018, and I covered it way back then. It had a variety of issues though. The game ended up getting bought out by its publisher Merge and pretty much taking over development of the title with none of the original developers on board because they simply just weren't able to convert it into something real. It has absolutely gone through a huge amount of changes. It looks pretty much like a Pixar twee little game, but now it's actually a proper survival, what you'd come to expect. Very different from Grounded, that's what a lot of my fans on my second channel keep trying to compare it to and I've used it a little bit to maybe get people interested but truth is it's more like Conan or Ark than Grounded. It's quite challenging that every bug wants to rip your face off and it's got the typical base building mechanics you'd like to see as well as some combat and dodge stuff too. The tames in it will allow you to get across the map more and although not every creature is able to be ridden pretty much like Ark it does have a nice little selection already. They've released a roadmap recently Still waiting for a price though, which is pretty unusual so close to launch, but expect it to be around $20 to $25. The publisher and maker of this game have got a big history of releasing titles and ports too, so it will be one of them games that comes to console eventually, and it's predicted to be in early access around 6 months to maybe a year. No dedicated server, so there's going to be no official servers at launch, but it's something they're looking into adding in the future. But honestly, I don't think this game needs them. It's got a feature that I really love. It borrowed a little bit, but tweaked to make much better from Fallout 76, and that is transferable bases. You can build your base absolutely anywhere on the map, but if you build it in certain trees, you can then take your base to any other world that you go and visit. You can take or change your characters and visit the same world. You can move your tree from one tree in your own world to another to get closer to an NPC or resources and you can also take your tree into your friends world. No longer waiting for your friends to get online so that you can do stuff together. You can go ahead and grind resources and then when they are joining you can hook up, go and take on challenges together maybe share some of the spoils or give each other some trading and then go back to your own world when they go off to have their dinner. No more running around a deserted server that's empty with no players, but you've still got the difficulty because it is a dedicated server. I think this is an amazing feature and I see a lot of games doing this in the future. I think to be honest, dedicated servers for a lot of games are pretty much redundant nowadays. Don't get me wrong, they can be really good in certain instances. Sons of the Forest I think will be pretty cool once they give more stuff to do. But can you imagine if 10 players were playing that game constantly, you'd all run out of stuff to do within minutes. And even games that I've wanted dedicated servers for, like Grounded in the past, and now I'm starting to think, no, this is the way to go. Give players a way to take their bases and join other players and keep their items. More than just characters at least, anyway, it really does mean that you can help each other out, divvy up the resources and then go back to your world and keep grinding. If you do want to build something together, you can build something on the floor, on the ground of one of your worlds and then simply you go and grind certain resources and when it's back up you contribute. I've seen quite a bit of talk about people disappointed it doesn't have official server support yet or PvP, but that is on its way apparently during early access as well. So right now it's a co-op game focused on 1 to 10 players, the usual survival mechanics. You'll have to face off against storms, making sure that your bases are repaired and making sure you're not caught out in the deadly ones. It's got multiple seasons that will affect your progress and like I said, lots of ways to get around from the Thames plus certain armor sets that you can use to glide around the map. I've sunk about 35 hours into it. I've already done a first impressions video and two Let's Play videos on my second channel. So go and check it out if you want to see more. And yeah, I'll be starting my live streams tonight on my third channel, getting ready to do the 100 days of Small Land. So the Dark and Dark beta pretty much went viral when it launched a few months ago. Lots of survival tubers played it, battle royale tubers give it a shot, and it's a really cool game. It is literally Tarkov, but with magic in dungeons, fighting against other players, skeletons, monsters, and more. But it looks like the game has been stolen from another. Apparently a previous employee of Nexon pretty much got fired for leaking game files. That employee went to set up a new company and took a whole bunch of the previous team members that were working on an unannounced project. Now Dark and Darker seems to have a lot of the same influences, art style as well as mechanics and Nexon aren't happy. They've ordered a cease and desist. The game has now been removed from Steam. This is all happening down in Korea, so I don't know what their legal system is like in terms of quickness, but yeah, don't expect to see Dark and Darker appear anytime soon. Be a real shame, it had a huge amount of players trying it out, like I said, it went pretty much viral. I thought it was absolutely amazing. 
They're not the only ones that have had this kind of trouble though. Myth of Empires apparently stole code from Snail Games, the publishers of Art Survival Evolved, and they also got delisted off of Steam, or at least you weren't able to buy any new versions of it. This is still ongoing, and that's been there for a year now, trying to sort this out. You can still buy Myth of Empires on a separate webpage, but yeah, Ark and Wildcard are pretty much saying that they stole code because a previous employee for Snail Games went and set up this new company. Which is pretty rich and ironic because that's exactly how Ark Survival Evolved started off, allegedly. They had to settle an outer court settlement for $40 million. I covered this way back, way back when, but Jeremy Stiegelitz, one of the founding creators of Ark Survival Evolved, left his previous company and was sued because apparently he had broken his terms of engagement in terms of quitting and not working on a next game. Trendy also, I think at the time, alleged that he had maybe taken ideas or technology with him too. It was all pretty odd and suspicious. He got his wife to be the actual founder of Ark Survival Evolved while he kind of hid in the background. And then, yeah, Trendy sued Art Survival Evolved and they settled out of court for $40 million. You gotta think they probably were pretty guilty of certain things there if they had to settle for that much rather than go full to court. So yeah, I found it pretty funny that they went and did the same thing to another employee who pretty much had the same idea as he did back in the day. The bottom line though for Dark and Darker is I don't expect to see this game actually ever come out now. I think it probably will get hit with a full cease and desist unless they can also agree some out of court settlement to Nexon. It'd be a real shame. The game absolutely was amazing. It looked pretty basic in certain parts but the actual gameplay was so addictive and it just felt so good. So yeah, I'll keep you guys up to date on this or whether or not it gets changed. I know it's not strictly a survival game, but I really, really enjoy this. So if it does ever come out, I'll definitely be covering it here. So there we go. What do you think about them games? Let me know in the comment section. And as I said, blah, 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 go and check me out on both my other channels if you want to see more Small Land gameplay over the coming weeks. I'm probably going to be adding Small Land as a long-term main game alongside my grounded content on the second channel. And it will be the next 100 days video I do on my live stream channel. And apart from maybe a few Sons of the Forest videos, taking a look at all the revamp stuff they've added and some fresh guides since a lot has changed now, I will see you guys hopefully for some Valheim news and some more fresh guides later on in the week. Bye bye.